Welcome to Costume Drama Sunday, where I am going to watch costume dramas with you guys and review it a little bit. The first uh, one I want to discuss is The Duchess, and I genuinely didn't have to think twice about what costume drama to start with, because this is one of my absolute all-time favourites. Um, came out in 2008, and I was just in love with it back in those days, as much as I still am today. For yet, those of you who don't know, The Duchess is about... Georgina Spencer, a distant family member of Princess Diana, and she later became the Duchess of Devonshire and was quite unhappy, uh, as the movie shows. This movie has, in my humble opinion, one of the best historically accurate costumes of any costume drama. I honestly didn't really know that much about the real Georgina, so I took it upon myself to read the book that this thing is based on, this movie is based on. It's Georgina, Duchess of Devonshire by Amanda Foreman. I kind of enjoyed it. Um, there's definitely a lot of stuff in this book that is not in the movie that in hindsight now having read it I wish was in a movie. That said I have not watched the movie in a long time, probably can say years. But let's let's just let's just go. The boys in stockings. Lord Amber, you better not let me down Charles Gray. Charles Gray. He's going to be important later on. Um, we're not sure if they actually met this early on um, because this is set before Georgina married her husband probably didn't know each other. Althorpe Estate. This is when Diana was uh, born, uh, as well as Georgina. Um, and 1774 is a year before um, Marie Antoinette and, well, Louis XVI became king of France. So that's the time we're dealing with here. All finds. Georgina's mother was also called Georgina, and she actually married Georgina's father out of love. That was a enormous love Trust match. Your still finds Georgina an attractive girl. Well, of course, ladies. At the time of Georgina's marriage, her father was still alive, so these sort of wedding discussions, really just sort of selling Georgina to the Duke of Devonshire, would not have been done by her. Definitely it would have been her father or any other male member of the family literally signing the papers there. So be it then. The Duke of Devonshire was as best of a match as Georgina could have hoped for. Um, the English aristocracy, the dukes were as high as you could get. The only thing higher would have been a royal duke, which is, you know, royalty, princes as well. And at that time, princes were very much still marrying actual princesses, so yeah, best match possible. Georgina was extremely close to her mother. I had hoped not to part with you until 18 at the soonest. True, she actually didn't want to have Georgina married off that soon. <laughs> Him twice. She would have seen him a bit more than twice, according to the book, definitely a couple of times more, and Georgina actually hoped that he was going to propose to her. She really wanted him to, knowing very well that, that would make her parents very happy and proud. She was actually upset at the thought that he may not be proposing to her. So this was very much a match that Georgina herself wanted. She also assured her parents that this is what she wanted. They weren't necessarily convinced, although, like I said, definitely one of the better matches that she could have hoped for. Weddings uh, during the late 18th century were like a private affair. So at Georgina's wedding, her younger brother George and her younger sister Harriet were not present. It was really just her parents and a couple of family members of the Duke. These people really were, like, genuinely celebrities. Devonshire House has burned down. It doesn't exist anymore, sadly. Um, but it was the Duke of Devonshire's main residence in London. Can you imagine having this house in the middle of London? It's this beautiful sack back dress named after what you see right now at her back. Stunning. And if I remember correctly, he's literally gonna cut it apart. Why women's clothes must be so damn complicated. Women's fashion during the late 18th century, basically the 18th century, but especially late 18th century, 18th century was heavily mocked. The cliche of the painful corsets in her back stays from the late 18th century, um, would not have been tight laced. When we are together intimately, I mean, I know, it can be a bother. See, this makes Absolutely no sense, because her mother was happily married uh, for many years. I thought that he would be like Papa, that under his... Georgina's father was a reserved man, um, that she struggled 
that a lot of people struggled connecting to. So Georgina was enormously politically involved and this movie doesn't necessarily portray the depth that she went to support the Whig party. Like the ideology of the Whig party was kind of like her religion. This really her entire life revolved around politics. The Whig party was extremely unpopular um, with King George III and so, and so was Georgina and her group of political friends including uh, Mr. Fox, who was one of the biggest politicians of his time, despised by George III. Um, he had a bit of a complicated relationship with the Prince of Wales, future George IV, who loved Georgina. Um, he was in love with Georgina, safe to say. Um, she, they probably never became, lo well, they for sure never became lovers. The Duke was just an extremely introverted person. He never, he had a very unloving childhood. And he and Georgina were just completely, com two completely different people. Um, I have to say, from the book, I kind of get the sense that their marriage was not as terrible as this movie is going to portray, but it definitely was not a success. And he had lovers from the very first moment on. She looks amazing, just adding that here. Like this costume, the hair, look at these beautiful earrings. These dogs. The Duke loved dogs, this is very true, which is why Georgina had the nickname Canis um, for him. That's Charlotte. They would later name her Charlotte Williams, literally Williams. Her mother is dead. It's true um, that her mother died. Georgina protests this in the movie. In reality, she didn't really. She um, had been struggling with conceiving and she was kind of happy to have this child to mother. As you can see here, she's rubbing her belly because she's pregnant. And the timeline here is pulled forward a couple of years because it took Georgina around eight years to have a healthy baby and her first child. And the probable reason that Georgina struggled so much with conceiving was her lifestyle. She drank a lot, she partied a lot, she didn't sleep, she was quite underweight. Um, she was also at this point already very addicted to gambling and when I read this book the thing that just kept coming back were her debts. So she was constantly in a huge debt and this is not really in the movie which is sad because it, it it's such a huge part of her story that she was constantly anxious because she constantly was a enormous debt. She constantly didn't have the money to pay off like in today's money millions and millions Again, such a stunning costume. I mean, look at that, it's beautifully made. I've seen some criticism of this movie that the colors are very kind of neutral. So like, there's not a lot of big bouncy colors, which definitely were in fashion during this time. So I do agree. There they are, gambling. Damn, Georgina inherited this addiction from her parents. She definitely did not go into labor while gambling, although that would have been very in character. <laughs> The Duke actually did not expect it to be a boy. <laughs> he was convinced it was a girl. So every time someone wanted to congratulate him on Georgina's pregnancy, he was like, don't bother, because it's definitely gonna be a girl. He is clearly disappointed that Georgina has given birth to a girl. Um, in the book, Georgina actually is said to have claimed that the Duke was very happy. Honestly, it was a relief that Georgina had finally had a healthy child, proving that she wasn't completely infertile, nor the Duke. Georgina was a very, very loving mother. I really did um, nurse her own children, all of them. And one of the reasons was because it was kind of hard to find a good, um, a good nurse at the time. Three girls. Yeah, the movie seems to give this impression that she actually managed to have some healthy children quite, quite soon on, but she really just didn't. She had so many miscarriages. Like I didn't, the, the book just kept like repeating them and I just stopped counting at a certain point, but they were definitely more than five in total. Georgina and the Duke spent a lot of time in Bath. When she arrives, all eyes are upon her. When absent, she is the subject of universal conversation. This is actually what the book opens with. This is what was written about um, Georgina in, um, in magazines, how they would be talking about her. So Georgina made ostrich feathers wearing that in your hair, in Le Pouf, this hairstyle, <laughs> enormous hairstyle, um, fashionable. That's Bass Foster, Lady Bass Foster. I have to say, Lady Bass Foster <laughs> does not come across well in the book. 
Again, the timeline here is incorrect. Um, Georgina um, met Bess before having either of her daughters. I'm in at ease with male company for the moment. Bess never <laughs> avoided men. <laughs> it's definitely not historically accurate, not in her character at all. In fact, one of Bess's lovers is um, Count Fersen, the love of Marie Antoinette's life. The Duke is taking the waters for his gout. The Duke really did have gout, that's true. Gosh, they've made the Duke such a creep, haven't they? Look at him. Home, I think, Georgina. Do you have any children? I do. Three boys. She didn't have three boys. She had only two. Do you have any reason to believe you cannot birth a male? Georgina definitely sincerely worried that she would not be able to have a son. She needed the money that that kind of financial stability would give her because she was constantly in debt. And again, the movie doesn't portray that at all. It's not illegal for a man to beat his wife with a stick. Unless the stick is thicker than his thumb. This was an actual law in the 18th century. Like, an actual judge was made to decide are men allowed to hit their women? And he said, yeah, if the stick is no bigger than a thumb. He also had taken her children. This was also very much possible for a man to do this in the 18th century because men would always have custody over the children. The law supports Mr. Foster. It did. It's a, it's a huge reality for women during this time period, being just being able to lose your children. You would not have custody. Look, <laughs> the way that Bess would end up relying on Georgina financially is insane. And Georgina apparently just never considered, hey, is this friendship actually that sincere? Is it that genuine? Or am I really just keeping this woman afloat? Kind of someone who manipulated Georgina enormously uh as well as the duke because it is said that everyone around georgina and the duke <laughs> didn't trust bess couldn't stand her but both of them were just completely enchanted by her as were a lot of men uh because she had multiple lovers i've arranged a wonderful start this season so georgina wrote pieces of theater plays she also at a certain point wrote a book um, pretty much everything was just about the ton, really, though her books and plays just give a really nice view, impression of what the riches of the riches, like the aristocracy, the noble nobility of England at that time, how they lived. And yes, she did make a theatre play about her bad marriage. Honestly, the Duke wasn't that much older than Georgina. He was in his early 20s, and well, she was 17, but it wasn't an age gap that was very uncommon. She's noticing him. Although from where I sat, it read as a tragedy. Oh, he can read her. He knows what's up. The Duke of Devonshire must be the only man in England not in love with his wife. I love Bass's earrings. I talked to Mr. Grey all evening. He's in love with you. Mm. My dear Bess, no, he is not. He is. Intercourse is not just about offspring. Close your eyes. Try to envisage Grey. As um, someone who came out as bisexual at quite a late age, I can assure you, if you do this with your girlfriends, you are not straight. There, there, there's reason to assume that Georgina was probably at least bisexual. How's the campaign going? Georgina would not have asked him how the campaign was going because she was in the middle of the campaign. <laughs> she was a very passionate campaigner. This may or may not be my favourite costume. I'm nervous even now. <laughs> what are you doing outside Lady Elizabeth's room? I highly doubt this is how Georgina found out. Yeah, they did become lovers and they did do it behind Georgina's back. In fact, Bess gave birth to her first child with the Duke, a daughter named Caroline Rosalie. While Georgina was pregnant with her first child, was probably um, conceived around the same time, which pissed Bess off. Bess was very jealous of Georgina throughout her life. She would only tell Georgina about this child years later. Georgina did end up forgiving Bess. Uh, she really just couldn't live without Bess, to be honest. She eventually ended up quite enjoying this ménage à trois that they would end up living in. If you have robbed me of my only friend! It's also just not true that this was Georgina's only true friend. Georgina was extremely close to her sister, who was so loyal to her. But she also had other friends, I think, that she could rely on. Definitely not in the same way that she relied on Bess. She was obsessed with Bess. Stunning costume, again. This is my only chance of ever seeing my children again. It's just absolutely not true. Uh, first off, this is not why she did it. 
Um, but also, <laughs> it's just not true that um, the Duke managed to give her sons back. It's uh, really made up by the movie, really, to make, I think, Bess just appear, make her appear more sympathetic. And again, dare I repeat, she did not have three sons. She had only two. I mean, I understand the setting of the scene because it's beautiful, right? But they would have met, like, constantly at parties. <laughs> would it help to unburden yourself? Great, he's such a charmer, isn't he? You don't have to please others all the time. This is actually true. Georgina was this person who constantly wanted to make everyone happy. I believe you do it so that people will love you. A psychiatrist before psychiatry existed. I fear I've done some things in life too late and others too early. Yeah. <laughs> it's nothing to be done. No, mm. you haven't. She had. It's a very careful kiss. I'm sorry. Don't say sorry. She wanted it. <laughs> Come on. There we go. They use like a specific sort of lens, right, for this dining table scene. Do you love each other? No. <laughs> they definitely okay. didn't. I make no demands on him. Mm, not really. Bess, do you love my husband as I do you? Which is not at all. <laughs> no. Bess really only loved herself. If you will accept my feelings for Charles Grey. Georgina was far too smart to make this type of suggestion. <laughs> and she knew her husband. Like, this is... Something that 18th century men would just never agree to, though. No. <laughs> and she would have known that. She would have hated it and felt it was very unfair, which it was, but she definitely knew it. I would challenge him. I'd put a bullet in his head. Oh my god. Are you his whore? Not yet. But she was the Duke of... <laughs> she was the Duke of Dorsets. Not, you know, but... Do you think I can make those bastards my heirs? Camera goes too best to show she doesn't like it when her sons are called bastards. They were in bastards. Now we're just going to skip through this scene. Um, this is a rape scene that I just really don't enjoy watching. Um, there's also no reason to assume this ever happened. The most interesting thing about this <laughs> scene is that they recreated the dress from her Gainsborough portrait. <laughs> a very famous portrait. Party hosted at um, Devonshire House. Happened all the time. And Georgina appears quite drunk, which is accurate. Georgina, I wouldn't call her a drunk, but she definitely drank a lot, and she also used a lot of other things. See, this would have actually been quite a good scene to introduce the Prince of Wales. And this is how all these houses burn down. <laughs> we're like, how do these things always burn down? This is how they burn down. Please put out her grace's hair. <laughs> this is supposed to be some comedy relief, I think using wine. <laughs> Georgina found out that she was pregnant when she was in France. As long as she follows strict instructions, there should be no impediment to the birth. Oh boy. It literally took them almost 15 years to finally have that heir. Literally giving her a check probably would not have been enough to pay for all her debts. Chatsworth House. Georgina actually didn't really die spending time there. Who would that be? This is a beautiful shot. You are a call from France. For a while. No revolution yet. This is very historically incorrect. Um, I'm not sure if Charles Grey was in France or in Paris during the French Revolution, the start of the French Revolution, but Georgina was. <laughs> she was in, in Paris, at least what, well, in France, um, when she gave birth to her son, who was born in 1790. So that's a year after the storming of the Bastille. She was very close friends to the Polignacs and to Marie Antoinette. They visited Versailles after the storming of the Bastille. Um, she really witnessed a revolution firsthand. And before the revolution, she had kind of, you know, she had this fierce belief in that the king should have less power, that parliament should have more power. But after witnessing the revolution, witnessing riots, witnessing all of that chaos, um, she kind of changed her mind a bit. She became a bit more practical when it came to her political ideals. Now, this whole movie doesn't really put that much attention or time into her whole political career, even though she pretty much devoted her life to the Whig Party. Um, but yeah, this was very much a turning point for Georgina, and they're putting it in this as this sort of side note of Charles telling her it's a little annoying. They re honestly, they really don't show how much of a party animal she was. Like, she would start partying 
six in the evening and go to bed eight in the morning. And she's wearing something that looks like chemise à la reine, which was this dress that was made fashionable by Marie Antoinette, her clothes friend. <laughs> Bess is really sort of like pimping her friend, isn't she? <laughs> Bess is like, go do it. You know you want it. Maybe you'll forgive me when you've had some good D. Now you see, I would not want to be in a menage à trois with the Duke and Bess, but I would want to be in a menage à trois with Charles and Georgina. <laughs> that building is in every costume drama. You know, him reading what kind of BS they'd be writing about Georgina, because they would constantly imagine her having lovers, like being everyone's lover and just describe her clothes and her fashion and her parties and her drunkens and her everything. Him reading that to her in bed probably happened. There are a lot of these drawings about, about Georgina. They're actually quite fun. Yeah, there were stories that she would kiss people in exchange for them to vote wig. Probably true. Oh, look at her. She's finally happy. And this wig is beautiful. Also her face. Those eyebrows would not have <laughs> have been fashionable. Whoops. There we go. Is Grey here? Bess is the lover of my husband. Bess had multiple lovers, actually. She really wasn't discreet, and it's true that this was the Duke's biggest problem. He just didn't want to look like a laughing star. Like, everyone knew. It's said that he behaved like he had a monopoly on Georgina during parties. He could divorce her now because she cheated on him, which was a legitimate reason for a man to divorce a woman. Not the other way around, but he could divorce her now. We love each other. I do not doubt it. He is a dreamer like yourself. I don't think Georgina was that much of a dreamer, especially not at this point. She, like I said, she was quite practical. You will never see your children again. This is historically accurate. He really did tell Georgina that she had to give Grey up, uh, else she wouldn't see her children ever again. That he had to go to that length to make that kind of threat for her to give up Grey. That says quite a lot. This will be the mistake of your life. I made that many years ago. It's not what he expected. It's also not what happened. <laughs> the way that Bess is actually sitting at that table must have been so frustrating. Like, you can't be with your lover, but his lover has to be at your table. <laughs> what on earth? They're so eager to make Grey into a super sympathetic character. Like, um, she explained her reasoning, like, here very clearly to him. But he kept a grudge. He made quite a quite a problem out of it. I'm carrying Charles Grey's child. She did not tell the Duke that she was pregnant at the dining table. In fact, he found out from other people when she was already six months with child and kind of showing. Um, it says something that he'd never noticed. And he forced her to go abroad and to give birth there. But she wanted to do it in secret. She didn't want him to find out at all because she was afraid that he would divorce her. I will go with G if G will have me. Uh, Bess did come with her, but so did Harriet, Georgina's sister. This is probably the most powerful scene in the entire movie, but it's not accurate. Um, the baby was very likely taken from Georgina the moment it was born, or right after it was born. So there was never this dramatic scene in the field where she had to give it up. It was, it was really just taken from her instantly. Yeah, that's just not... And Bess, Bess would have sympathised with this um, because she was also initially made to give up the children that, the daughter that she had with the Duke. Obviously there were her sons that she didn't see for years because her husband took them from her. So yeah, there was a lot of sympathy here. Her name is Eliza. And it's true that she named her daughter Eliza. Um, that was definitely Georgina naming her that. My dogs would always lose their shit at this scene. <laughs> at these birds, I just remember that happening. You can just see that this is filmed in actual, like, one of these amazing country houses that England has, right? This is just such an amazing set. I haven't really mentioned the set yet. It just looks so good. But this is a scene where the Duke is trying to sort of make it make up with Georgina, whereas really Georgina would have been more inclined to try and make up with the Duke. She really, really hoped that he would forgive her for the affair, for having someone else's child. Um, she wanted to be on good terms with the Duke because she needed his money to pay off her debts. From this point on, I don't think she ever became truly happy again. She lost a lot of people, her sister became very ill, uh, she herself struggled with her health a lot. Uh, again, these constant debts. Um, she really sort of was kind of not the number one person in the Whig party 
anymore. I'm to be engaged. So this is not true. Um, Charles did not tell Georgina herself. He didn't have the balls to tell her himself. She found out through newspapers and apparently was devastated. And I have a niece, Eliza, who is very much loved. Yeah, she did see uh, her daughter Eliza throughout her life. She didn't get to see Eliza grow up because Georgina actually didn't grow that old, um, surprisingly, with her lifestyle. But she probably would have liked what she saw if she had seen Eliza grow up because Eliza actually was happily married. She was beautiful, smart, intelligent, kind. Everyone really liked her. Pretty much everyone in London knew that she was Georgina's illegitimate daughter. Yeah, Bess did become Duchess. <laughs> That is true. With Georgina's blessing. And that really is the end of a tragic story. Okay, so that was the Duchess. Um, honestly, still a really good watch. Still enjoyed it a lot. The costumes are one of the best, absolutely. Perhaps even my my favourite of all costume dramas, but also like I'm very much a sucker for this time period. Um, if I could dress in anything. It will be a poof and a robe de l'anglais every day. I could do that. I'd be happy to do that. I'm missing two things. Her involvement in politics, as far as that went, because it went really, really far. But also a gambling addiction kind of added to her already being miserable. And it was a way of coping with her situation, right? She was so unhappy in her marriage. She felt so lonely. After the birth of her son finally admits to the actual sum, and it's around three to four million dollars in today's money. It's honestly a miracle that he never really divorced her. She really gambled his whole fortune away. Yeah, really good movie, really love it. Thank you for watching. Is this the point where I say like, please like and subscribe, please like and subscribe? And maybe let me know what movie we should watch next. <laughs> See ya. Cheers.